Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimark. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia records a steady decline in the number of COVID-19 cases. The Rastafari community discusses COVID-19 vaccination with health officials. And the OAS celebrate people of African descent. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is reporting a steady decline in the number of COVID-19 cases. People accessing care at respiratory clinics, as well as the number of admissions at the respiratory hospital. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George is encouraged with the progress thus far in managing the third wave of infection. With the rollout of the COVID 19 vaccine, the CMO is hopeful for improvements in the quality of life for citizens. However, Dr. Belmar George warns that the battle against COVID 19 is not over understand and acknowledge the level of frustration that the public has had to endure by the many protocols and lockdowns in the past year. These measures have been implemented in an effort to reduce the impact of the virus on our vulnerable population. As we reduce the cases and the risk, we have been reducing the strict measures in a controlled manner. At this point, we remind the public that although we note the flattening of this third wave, we still have over 100 active cases. We would like to alert the public that mass crowd activities and open socialization is not recommended nor approved at this time in our management of the pandemic. We continue to receive numerous reports of widespread socialization across the island. We are still at high risk at this point in time. Dr. Belmar George says the public health team is working to reduce the number of active cases to less than 50 in order to enable safe opening of activities. The CMO is urging the public to cooperate and be patient. The premature social activity will lead to an upsurge of cases given the exponential transmission typical of this virus. As such, everyone is reminded to continue adhering to the infection prevention and control measures that are proven to reduce transmission of the COVID-19 virus and keep us safe. These include the following, to wash your hands, often if soap and flowing water, or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Wear your mask, which covers your nose, mouth, and chin. Maintain physical distance from others and avoid crowded activities. Let us all work together to sustain the safe reopening of school in April and maintain the numerous gains that we have achieved thus far. A total of 3,977 people have recovered from COVID-19 in St. Lucia. There have been 58 COVID-19 related deaths up to the 25th of March 2021, with a total of 4,161 cases to date. Meantime, the director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is warning of a COVID-19 surge in the Americas. In the past week, over 1.2 million people were infected with the virus in the Americas, while 31,272 people have died. The pandemic is particularly dire in, the, in South America, where the infection is reported to be spiking in Chile, Paraguay and Uruguay, where the health system is buckling under the pressure. Cases are also soaring in Brazil, Venezuela, Bolivia, Peru, and Guatemala. In the Caribbean, a majority of cases were reported by Jamaica, where they have risen steadily for several weeks. Cuba is also reporting an increase in cases, along with Aruba, Curaçao, and Antigua and Barbuda. What I've just described is an active public health emergency. The COVID-19 virus is not receding, nor is the pandemic starting to go away. Vaccines are coming, but they are still several months away for most people in our region. Until they arrive, and until most of the population is vaccinated, we must continue to do what works. Wear a mask, maintain your distance, avoid large gatherings, and follow the guidance of your local health authorities. And this is especially important with holidays coming up in many countries. People cannot and must not let down their guard 
by engaging in close contact with others. Dr. Etienne informed that OECS member states can expect the first shipment of vaccines from the COVAX facility between April 5th or April 6th. Some countries in our region have received zero doses of vaccines through COVAX thus far. Other countries are getting enough to vaccinate a mere 2 to 3% of their populations. Although we expect that you know, every country in Latin America and the Caribbean will receive some vaccines in early April, those deployments of doses are not, and I stretch, not enough to protect vulnerable groups. So this makes it imperative that rich countries with surplus doses of vaccines, that they share their doses with countries that have received few vaccines through donations to COVAX, or by other means. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne. Members of the Rastafari community were granted the opportunity to gain knowledge and voice their concerns in regard to the COVID-19 vaccine. More in this report from Fernal Neptune. The Ministry of Health recently held a sensitization session with the Rastafari community aimed at bringing awareness and building confidence among them of the COVID-19 vaccine and the policy. Family Life Educator in the Bureau of Health Education, Naomi Grandison says, it is necessary to engage the Rastafari community in dialogue as they also play an important part in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. There are persons within the um, community who are interested in taking the vaccine, but they're the misconceptions have been out there. So we're hoping that the information brought forward for these persons can help them to clarify um, some of those misconceptions so that they'll be more open. And for those who have their belief and their faith that we can find a way we, that we respect it and we give them the reassurance that this process, this um, vaccine is voluntary. This is a policy of the government that it be voluntary and persons not be forced to take the vaccine. And this is something that is very um, important for their principle and their practice. So giving that reassurance too also helps us to develop that level of trust. And, um, you know, hopefully it's not, it's not just about the vaccination, but also the trust and the collaboration between um, the two of us. Ambassador of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, EABIC, the Honorable Pris Kailash Leo says, despite a Rastafari community opposing to vaccination in general, they welcome the discussion with health officials and chat a way forward. Our main focus is that, that the members of the Rastafari community who do choose to take the vaccine, that they have that assurance that if it is that, that um, any harm is caused to them after taking the vaccine, that they will be duly compensated or they will be taken care of if it is that there is some adverse side effect or there is something that happens to them. And also, so for the people who do not intend to take the vaccine and to maintain that principle, that they have that official exemption that will not prevent them from actually moving and, and, and participating in their in the everyday activity or whatever means of economic achievements that they have to actually do. The Ministry of Health reminds the public that the choice to receive the COVID-19 vaccine is voluntary. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Organization for American States, OAS, this week is celebrating the fourth annual Inter-American Week for People of African Descent in the Americas. The OAS Assistant Secretary, his Excellency Nestor Mendez underscores the importance of observing the annual event with activities that foster greater awareness and respect for the heritage and culture of people of African descent and their contribution to the development of society. This seminal week was established by the member states of the OAS in February 2018 to remember the legacy of slavery and the slave trade, to be continually mindful of their consequences on the lives of Afro-descendants and fostering greater awareness and respect for the diversity of the heritage and culture of the people of African descent and their contribution to the development of society. The immense positive contribution that people of African descent have had on the socio-economic, political, 
and cultural spheres of our societies is undeniable. The observance is being held under the theme, Ending Slavery's Legacy of Racism. The imperative for strengthening justice and resilience in Afro-descendant communities in the Americas in the face of COVID-19. The theme highlights the ongoing struggle to eradicate the vestiges of structural racism which permeate our societies and the fundamental need for the implementation of measures to address its root causes and engender a more just society. The COVID-19 pandemic has glaringly unmasked these social inequities, where in some cases, Afro-descendants are more likely to die from COVID-19 than any other racial group, primarily due to disparities in economic inequality, overcrowded housing, environmental risks, and limited access to healthcare. The virus of racism must be confronted and eradicated. Activities commemorating the observance includes virtual exhibition, workshops, and panel discussions. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force has resolved to ramp up intelligence-driven patrols and hotspot policing amid a soaring homicide rate. Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy says police are making headway into their investigations into recent killings. He says particularly disturbing was the targeted attack on Executive Secretary of the Grosely Minibus Association, Hermia Lord. She was shot at point blank and a defenseless person, a male coming to a woman. And this, I think, um, is something that we need, we need to look at. And actually, there, we are pursuing a suspect in that, in that matter. And we are hoping that we, um, justice would be served when this person is, um, is arrested. Daisy encourages the public to assist the police in their investigations. In fact, instead of um, circulating um, voice notes or messages that you could get to um, someone, the office of the commissioner, a close friend, as um, it has been communicated, a police that you trust, um, somebody, give them that information, which would be relayed to the investigators so that we would be able to see light through our investigations. So um, I'm appealing to members of the public and also thanking those who have come forward to give um, information. Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Equiole. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça au ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bécine de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachi ou épan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole, ou ni pour mettre ten en di de bak la. Toilet bol la, ka koule, si ou ka wè koule à de bol la avant ou floch li. Un toilet bol ki ka koule, ka gaspille un chai glou. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau ouesse ya pour ou ze fle ou. Le ou sauve de l'eau, ou ka bese manye ya, ou ka servi tepe ou an man. Sauve de l'eau tout le ou ni an chans. Ek chorje tout de l'eau e pontan. Ça, c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the Antien Nouvelle Equiole. Merci, Ota Homer. Merci, Madame, Département de responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette fois GIS et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Capositou Nouvelle Equiole. Présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Compagnie Cabot qui engage en affaire développement en cette ici paye corporation assurance nationale ça c'est NIC 29.4 millions de dollars ça fait le 17 en mois de mars 2021 la l'homme l'agence a là car vous présenté paiement entièrement pour l'argent qui était prêté en hauteur de 27 millions de dollars et la théorie qui vivait en hauteur de 2.4 millions de dollars la théorie a sous la l'homme l'agence a là qui a représenté 10% pour 20 mois qui en Haïti ont fait l'argent salaire avélable. Selon en Haïti, le paiement salaire, c'est un qui vraiment mérité noté en résultat des conditions payées, ça c'est payé cette ici, 
à la maladie de corona, qui a l'occasion pour un pile institution qui a fait appel à Soyo pour un petit soulagement, un soulagement pour être qui diverses compagnies et individus doués. Et nous a ajouté que ça a montré de la confiance qui a été en cette ci comme pays qui a préparé pour l'industrie touristique la vie pour un moutan, qui est un bon signe en faveur de l'économie, cette ci pour susciter encore. Organisation pour les sept ici ou apporter qui la tenu une augmentation en limo monde qui désobéit protocole pour protection corona et ça c'est un premier quartier l'année ça là rapport police qui a montré entre 27 décembre 2020 pour les 20 en mois de mars 2021 il a enregistré 136 cas de désobéissance pour protocole par opération business pays seulement Police a été 18 moun, 218 pendant yon moun trouvé condamné. La tenue 17 moun qui désobéi quarantine à Kayo même, yon porte euh, rapport qui 12 festins te prekou en Kayo moun, et police a été 5 moun par conséquence de ça. Yon aussi a été yon moun de yon tan yon session kote plusieurs moun te semblé, et police veti 16 le resta. Police te aussi tenu en pile patience et puis secteur de transportation publique. Encore encore. Côté Yoveti, yon 162 cas de désobéissance par chauffeur auto passager. Police encore, pas porter plus de code pièce en yo. Yo a été yon moun qui allait contre protocole à de yon hôtel et qui Yoveti 10 les autres. Superintendent Dr. Macha Masili déclare que, en parmi ces désobéissances protocole, c'était moun qui a tenu masse à Soufijay et qui a été suivre curfew. Selon Dr. Superintendent Silly, la police trouvait 709 personnes qui ont tenu masque à Sofia. La police a été 87 trois trouvés condamnés, entre 200 pour 800 dollars. Les individus ont trouvé condamnés pour 4 mois de temps pour faire service à la commune et ont l'autre trouvé une année de sécurité. La police a été 600 personnes. Pour la période de la police a été 200 yon moun, 17 moun te fait plein de l'autre moun, et 40 moun trouvé condamné. Police qui a fait public la savent qui est contre loi pour moun combler le bord de la rivière et le bord de la mer. Donc, c'est ce qui a annoncé aussi que pour finissement de la semaine de Pâques, depuis vendredi, le deuxième pour le 5 avril, que le a commencé à 7 h soir pour 4 h matin. Et le business n'est pas fermé depuis 6 heures. La police concerne aussi que les gens qui continuent à combler un cabaret, un cabaret, et le bord de la mer sans suivre ce protocole qui est en place. Mais vous voyez ce que ça, pour le ménagement, puis tout ce que ça, j'ai préparé et j'ai présenté une vidéo pour vous placer croyance en grand héritage de la pour ce que ça. La présentation de la vidéo est en quatre sections qui a montré diverses activités, par exemple, théâtre, danse, et chanson, aussi divers bénéfices qui ont pu trouver là où ils ont pu tomber en bas vers l'héritage mondial. Les gens qui ont fait diverses contributions aussi pour ces pitons, hein, trouver des goûts dans l'héritage de ça, aussi ils ont discussion, et puis M. Giles Romulus, qui est go grec de tout développement de l'autorité de ménagement, de développement, c'est plutôt cette ci à part mes plusieurs autres activités. Durant le mois de février 2021, le bureau autorité de ménagement plutôt cette ci et puis c'est pour honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert et le département qui est responsable pour entretenir le développement sostenable des produits de production sala qui a quatre sections. C'est le ministre Dr. Rigobert qui présente le programme là officiellement comme c'est lui qui est responsable du mois de sala. Comme c'est qui est responsable. Le mot de ça a été adressé à divers règles qui ont gouverné l'opération de initiative ça Et, messieurs, mesdames, ça c'est côté nous, notre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Je vous remercie encore pour dire comment vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle à quoi vous avez la Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle. Merci, Appeal Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Homer Mark. <laughs>